All right, and so there's going to be an abrupt ending at one point during this recording. <laughs> I might upload it in two parts, actually. Uh, I don't have the paid version of Zoom, unfortunately, so it uh, cuts off after 45 minutes. So we went 45 minutes. This is going to be an awesome episode. I can't wait <laughs> till, uh, to get to work, working on editing this, so this will be exciting. Um, so we are waiting on Dr. Ciccarelli to come back. I sent her the information to rejoin the meeting hopefully she got it um so right now i've just got it's just me and jeff here again um well uh i'm trying to think so i know next week we've got and i've always been terrible at pronouncing her name uh alicia yoon on here we're uh-huh. here next week yep. um she'll be able to talk more about the situation with alps uh yeah uh, it should be she'll should be great yeah, can we say for sure that that is, as of Sunday the 22nd, that is not going to be taking place? Yeah, and I think I just see that Mary's just back yep, on. I did yeah. too. Uh, per the SOI memo, in consulting with members of our board, uh, consulting others, uh, yeah, we're, we're canceling all of our events, practices, and social activities through May 31st. So that would include Alps University. Okay. Uh, Mary, just so you're aware, I, uh, as I was telling Jeff, um, reason that there was that interruption, uh, I have the traditional free version of Zoom. So after yep. 45 minutes, it cuts off. So yep. I'll just be able to combine both episodes or I'll, I'll make it a two-parter, depending on how long <laughs> it is. So. There you go. Alrighty, so uh, I know Jeff. You I don't to- know if we've told people enough about even if they're young and not at risk, why they have to stay home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Mary. I, I think you had mentioned something about that. Most of the deaths in Italy are those seventy and over, but yeah, I don't think we talked much about the young ones. I mean, wh- what does it make you think when you see all those young people on the beaches of Florida during spring break? I think Is- that it, it actually breaks my heart. Because I think they don't care. It, may, it looks like they don't care about other people hmm. to me. Um, and they, or they don't understand. The, the only way this will work is if we all follow the rules. And if we don't, we're going to overwhelm the health system and, not be, and people will die because we don't have enough ICU beds. And so it is really critical for everybody to care about each other enough to socially distance. Um, and it isn't something to make fun of, and it isn't something to take lightly. Um, just like um, you hear doctors all the time asking everyone to get immunized for the flu, because we have a way to fight the flu, yet lots of people choose not to do it, thinking it doesn't matter to them because they're young. But in fact, we don't know if we're infected, and if we're going to, I think that everybody should stay away from their grandparents who are over age 70, if they've been mm-hmm. Community at all, um, and they should do things for their their families that are over seventy. That being said, people as young as thirty have died from this virus. So it's not like it's just old people who are dying. It's just most of the deaths are in that age group. So there are there have been very few preteens who have died. In fact, what well, most recently, none in China, none in Italy yet. Of people who are pre-teenage. Mm-hmm. But there have been people as young as 14, um, and there have been people in, in China, there ha- isn't anybody under 30 reported dying in Italy yet. Um, I, and we don't have good enough data to know yet about America, about the US, because we're too new into the curve. Um, uh, and so we know that people who are 30 and 40 and 50 can get very sick. Um, and some of them can even die. But we know that if people in their 70s get sick, their chance of dying is higher. And so I don't mean to say this to make people feel scared. I mean to say this to, for so people can understand it's not about the other guy, it's about you. It's about you breaking down the spread of the disease. If you're a human, you can spread the disease, uh, which is an interesting statement. Do we think that your pets can spread the disease? Um, as it stands right now, it does seem like pets are getting the illness but that doesn't mean that they can't get droplets of someone else who sneezed on their coats and be infectious from your touch of their coats after you've been out in community. 
So you should keep your, your animals a distance from other people as well, ideally. You could walk them, but, but they should participate in your family's social distancing. Yeah, I know that was been something that I've seen a lot of that. It's, there's a, what do you, um, so I know there have been a lot of false rumors that have been floating around because everybody's so scared or panicked mm -hmm. that they're, if they see it on the internet or see it on TV, that they take it as immediately true, especially if it's somebody who's got that type of voice that sounds somewhat authoritative or whatnot. What do you suggest that people should do to, when it comes to those rumors and stuff like that? I think that the Center for Disease Control, CDC, the Indiana State Department of Health, ISDH, are the places to look if you want accurate, accurate information. And I think Facebook is not the place to go for accurate information, really for almost anything, quite honestly. Um, and uh, uh, anything scientific, that is to be said. And I think you need to be cautious with what your friends tell you if they're the type of person who might spread rumors and, and doesn't fact check their own information. Um, and so uh, we use the CDC and the, I, and the State Department of Health as our voices of truth when we're having a public health emergency like this. Okay. So Mary, I just received a text message from my dentist. Um, he's not seeing anybody for the foreseeable future other than emergency. Unless you have an emergency. So if you have an absence so, or a, a, you know, a, a tooth that hurts, they will see you, but they will not be doing any cleaning. In the same manner, most pediatricians offices are seeing children who need immunizations up to age 18 months, but well child visits of older children where most of us are not doing right now, um, except mm -hmm. perhaps. Um, and anybody who we can see by phone and video instead of make them come to a waiting room, is, um, we would like to do that. We're also uh, every day trying to work out better processes of if you're sick, come in through this door. If you're well, we'll use this waiting room and these doors so that we can actually socially distance in the healthcare facilities as well. We've made one floor at Riley Hospital, the floor that's the children who may have um, the infection and, and we're not mixing those floors. So the nurses on that floor are only on that floor and the doctors on that floor mm -hmm. are on that floor. So we're trying to do some things in a healthcare perspective, including dental, including veterinaries, um, uh, to avoid um, having people do things that are not necessary right now. Most doctors, dentists, veterinary offices have increased their availability by, by phone so they can help you decide if something is necessary, if you're confused about that. Okay. Sounds like, again, definitely make sure you're going through the right uh, right people to don't listen to everything you read on the internet. It's not true. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully by now people would have learned that, but I guess extreme times make people do silly things. Well, and, and there, there, unfortunately, there are people who are purposeful liars just to create disruption, aren't there? Yeah. And, uh, and they think that's maybe funny or effective in some other manner. And that's why we have to be remind ourselves that you can get scammed by phone calls from people who shouldn't be calling you, by things you read on, the, on Facebook that aren't true, et cetera. And from my perspective, Ben, what I'd also say though is probably just a lot of people are just worried. Uh, there's not a lot of answers out there. And they're probably just, some people are spreading these rumors, not, you know, there are those that, that intentionally lie. And I think there's others that are just spreading the rumors mm just because they don't have any better answer. They're just, right. they're looking for answers and this is what they come across. And I like Mary's response. You know, I'm, I'm checking the, the uh, Department of Health website every day to see updated count of how many cases are in Indiana. Um, unfortunately, and, that number keeps we rising. Don't want we don't want people to think it's not real because our numbers in this state aren't high yet. It's real. We're not testing enough people to know what our real numbers are. We only know the numbers of people who are so sick they're in ICUs. And so please don't think that we're ma making a mountain out of a molehill. I don't believe we are. I think that we are 
having um, a people sick in community who are just not sick enough to need the hospital. And so I think our numbers are very deceiving in that way uh, because we're not doing broad testing. Right. So Mary, on, on your perspective then, um, we with Special Olympics International, Special Olympics Indiana have made a decision to cancel events through May 31st. Um, mm -hmm. From from the medical perspective, why why are we canceling so far in advance? Um, um, uh, I think there are a lot of different. Th that question is complex and mm -hmm. it's probably more complex than just the public health issues alone, because of the other commitments that have to be made to maintain things that are scheduled. So you know, I think economic. Well, I I guess I'm asking you from the well. from the public health persp per perspective. Uh, um, why I is think that I think we can guess some issues from what we've seen in China and South Korea and Italy. Um, I believe that the best information currently says that China has bent its curve, but they used extreme um, uh, uh, shelter uh -huh. place rules. They did not do social distancing. They said you can't be out of your house. Um, and so uh, uh, South Korea did a little more um, uh, less stringent perhaps uh, a shelter, sh uh, a social distancing. And Italy self admits that they came to that late to the game and we started maybe a little earlier than Italy did. And mm -hmm. so we're hoping we're not gonna fare as badly as Italy. Um, we might not fare as well as China. Um, and, and so I think the next few weeks will help us a lot. And I, I've been telling you, as you know, Jeff, like, you know, every two weeks we'll know a lot more because right now there's a lot of best and worst case scenario modeling which isn't necessarily a promise that either are going to happen but but uh i think the may 31st right now is about worst case scenario issues and that's modeling that for a variety of reasons i hope that's the worst case scenario well, I will tell everybody that uh, actually Mary and I have been in communication on this whole thing um, for well over a month now before any of these decisions to cancel came about. And at one point, you know, Mary was communicating to me, it's something we need to stay on top of, something to think about, something to, to consider. And then there was just one email out of the blue that Mary sent to me one morning and it said, you really need to consider canceling yeah. things. And that and was the same, same day that Special Olympics International sent me the first memo for March 31st. And I tell you what, when Mary Ciccarelli is nervous, mm -hmm. it's time to be nervous. And uh, I, I certainly- Maybe I'm not nervous, but I'm serious. You're right, actually. you're right. You're I'm right. serious. And, and I think that- That's um, a better word, actually. Yeah, I think, and, I, and we've, been, we've read now some published data out of both China and Italy that's helping us have a better understanding of really what the patterns there have looked like. Um, and knowing a little bit more has made this clearly the right thing to do, I think. If by some chance this is overkill, I'm not saying it is anyone, um, then we'll just go, Phew. we got by without something terrible happening. The worst thing we could do is overkill at this point. Because, I mean, not, not the worst thing. It, it would be better to right. overkill than, um, than to um, uh, be cavalier and say it's not going to affect us and, and that's why I was at least slightly critical of people who are on the beach in Florida. They need to get off the beach and go home. I, I will say that I, I saw a, a quote from a, a school district superintendent, and I can't remember where the, the superintendent was from, but the superintendent said, we'll never know if we overreacted, but right. we will certainly know if we underreact. That's right. And, and, um, and to be very concrete, that means if we underreact, a lot more people are gonna die. And so it's probably worth a sacrifice by all of us to change our lives structure a little bit so that a lot of people don't die. And I think that's what you can say you're doing. You're doing for your community and your family. You're trying to save lives by staying home. And, and it's hard to feel like you're doing something good by just locking yourself in your house, but you are. And, and Ben and, and Mary, I think one of the things that we can now think about is, you know, there, there, hopefully there will be some good that comes out of this. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. um, we think of those who, who we've forgotten, 
I've been bad. I've, both of my parents are over 70. My mother-in-law is over 70. And I still have three grandparents who are alive, uh, all three of them over 90. And I've probably communicated to them more than I ever have before. And shame on me as a, as a son, as a son-in-law, as, as a grandson, that I'm communicating. I can't see them. I can't go physically visit with them, but I can certainly call them up. Um, my daughter, who's 18, my, my son, who's 13, fight like cats and dogs sometimes. Uh, they went out, and before all this came about, we kind of knew it was going to come, so we went, and they bought a video game. And they've been playing video games together at night just because I think – um, they're worried, and by playing together, it's a way for all of us to, to, to get closer. There's some good that will happen from all of this. Um, it's not things that are in our control, but there, how, how we react to this is definitely within our control. Like Mary said, uh, the virus is out of our control, but, but social distancing, washing our hands, making sure that we stay safe, that those we live with stay safe, that's within our control. And um, I say we focus on what we can control, and those are some of those things. Um, there are thinking of others. Interesting, there are already interesting studies, uh, sur uh, information coming out of China and Italy about how the air is clearer and there are more birds in the environment because the air, the pollution is down because of, mm. of the, the, the um, stopping of um, commercial business. Um, and while that economically is painful, um, the fact that it might actually be a little good for the earth is another interesting uh, um, aside. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a good timeout for all of us. Um, it's a timeout. It, it, I, I like that phrasing. That is a good phrasing. We all run life at a pace that might be too fast for humans. Yeah. And, and having to run our life at a slower pace and stopping and noticing that might not be a bad lesson for us. You know, I think it's, it's easy sometimes from my perspective, um, to look at the schedule that we do in Special Olympics and to see how hectic we all are. But man, I sure miss the state basketball weekends. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm going to miss summer games, although I hope we can do something in some fashion later in the summer. I'm just going to miss those things. And it's, it's times like this that you in some ways, you, you rekindle why you do all that you do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We stop being so busy and we start appreciating what we have and um, we start appreciating each other. And, um, so. and one other thing we haven't talked about is people who are economically being hit hard by this as well. And so people who have jobs that don't have PTO, so if they're sent home, they're without money. And um, I think places like the trustee's office and United Way and other services like that are working really hard to have access to some resources for families who are struggling without food or other um, critical resources. And so that's, that's another thing to uh, um, uh, generally churches and social mm -hmm. and other agencies like United Way and trustees offices would be the places I would think of if you need help because of financial emergency. And I know there's been a few different places that have like have been trying to raise money for these different things. Like, yes. I don't know if you've seen the commercial for the Reese's eggs that have been coming out. Mm -hmm. They mention in there that they're hiding in chiropractic offices. My sister happens to be a chiropractic doctor. So they're selling Reese's eggs at their office for a dollar. And those, that money is going towards the local food pantry. So they took advantage of something you see on TV <laughs> to be yeah. able to, help raise money for something like that. Great. I think And like so that if you don't have something to do, I think it's a great idea to call your local shelter and see if they need you to make sandwiches for them. And maybe you can make two loaves of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for them. Or maybe you can bring some things um, to a shelter, to a food pantry that needs uh, either money or supplies. Because remember, you can drive to places and just drop things off. That's still safe. Well, uh, Jeff, if you got, if you don't have anything else you want to talk about on the Special Olympics side of things, uh, I'm not well, sure if there is anything. I, I don't have much else. I just, uh, you know, I, I, again, I appreciate Mary and all Mary's advice that she's mm -hmm. given to us making some of these really big decisions. Um, this will be over soon. Uh, I think the hard part is we just don't know when. And... Um, I, I, I cannot wait. 
to see an athlete in competition once again. Um, so and by all until of us that do, day. And by all of us following social distancing now, we'll get to see each other then as well. We'll all still be here. Thanks for doing this, Ben. Oh, thank you guys yeah. for both. Thanks, for, Ben. Thank you, Jeff, for coming back on. And thank you, Mary, for joining us. Hopefully, again, maybe in a few weeks, once we get some more information out, I might have get a hold of you and see if I can have you come back on for another sure. follow-up episode. Sure. Um, those of you that are listening, uh, thank you again for taking time out of your day and dealing with the I either two-parter or very long episode, depending on how I fix this. Uh, I'm going to have to try to see how much I Zoom cost to become a subscriber to it. Uh, and anyways, for those of you listening, if you haven't liked, subscribed, or left a comment down in the uh, bottom of the video, please do so. Uh, like I said, we're going to record on Sundays, upload on Wednesdays, so things might change. That's why we've been very adamant about when we have recorded this. Uh, so we're definitely trying to make sure that we date the video so they know when we are doing this. Um, and if you have any questions at the end of the video and also in the description, there is an email you can send uh, or email that you can send any questions you have or anything you want to say uh, to any of our guests. You can send it through that. It'll be in the description and also at the, in a card at the very end of the video. Um, unless you two have anything else, I guess we can go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks a lot. Right, thank you guys. Stay well, everyone. Mm -hmm. Bye, Ben. Bye, Mary. Bye-bye. And for all of us, we are going to go ahead and say everybody have a good rest of their day, and we will see you next week.